Describe the unit circle. A circle, we talk about unit circle, we're talking about a circle. The unit means radius one, but more specifically, that's radius one, but centered at the origin at zero, zero. That spot right there, right? That's the origin, zero, zero. And so you get this equation down here for the unit circle, which kind of becomes key in a, when we do identities. Uh, what do the x and y coordinates of a point represent on a circle? Well, the cosine is the adjacent side on the triangle, right? So that'd be this length right here, which is x. And the y would be that one there. And the radius is 1, so the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which would just be x over 1, which of course is just x. And then the sine is the adjacent or the opposite over hypotenuse so that'd be y over 1 which is just of course y um, discuss the difference between coterminal angles and reference angles well coterminal angles and reference angles in a sense they sit in the same spot but the coterminal means how many rotations you are going forward or backward right positive or negative clockwise or counterclockwise, however you want to describe it. So uh, positive rotation, if I go to here, that's 45 degrees. I could go all the way around and get to 405 degrees. That would give me something in the same spot. Or it could even go backwards, and that would give me in the same spot. So as long as the terminal angle is in the same spot, all these angles are coterminal. Now, a reference angle is a little bit more specific. So the reference angle measures the angle from the x-axis to the terminal, but the angles are always between 0 and 90 degrees, right? So you're never going to have an angle that's greater than 90 for any of your reference angles. So so in quadrant 1, you have the, the any angle that's in here. Quadrant 2, again, this one here quadrant 3 down here, quadrant 4 like that. Now, how do you calculate them? Well, ang first quadrant, they are what they are. You know, it's like 45 or 30 or 60. So that means you just have to reduce your coterminal angle down to uh, whatever the angle is. Now, the coterminal the co angle in this one would be something like, say, 135. But you want to figure out the reference angle. For anything in the second quadrant, you want to take... Uh, 180 degrees or pi if you're doing it in radians and subtract off whatever angle that you're talking about so the uh, um, coterminal angle so theta has to be an angle that's between right you usually want to think of it like between 0 and 2 pi so that means you find the what the value of one rotation would be so in other words div skip, divide out all the rotations so that you're so that you reduce something like this, like this is 105, or 405 I mean, so you subtract out two, uh, 360 degrees and you get 45. This one you would add it to pi to 360 degrees and again you get 45, which is the, the coterminal angle that's between 0 and 2 pi. Now, in the first quadrant, it is just the angle, but if this angle was over here, so I had 135, then you'd also get that. So you're in the second quadrant, you subtract from 180 or pi. In the second quadrant, you subtract 180 from the angle, right? So you're subtracting 180 or from, or from pi, depending on if you're radians or degrees, right? And here, you're subtracting from 360, you subtract off the angle, right? Now, if you're going the other direction around, then, of course, you kind of have to play with, you know, getting rid of the full rotation and seeing what the angle actually is, and then you subtract it. So, again, like, if this was negative, like, if I had this one, right, if this was, like, negative 45, that'd be in the same place, but, of course, the reference angle is just 45. So, the angle is always a number, or an angle between 45, 0 and 90 so it's never gonna be negative it's never good so that's what reference angles how they relate um let's see explain how the cosine of an angle in the second quadrant differs from the cosine of the reference angle in the unit circle so you have an angle over here right so this thing 
since we know that x's are are the same as the cosine then we know that they're supposed to be negative in this quadrant. So the reference angle would be positive because it's always set into the first quadrant. So you have to tack on the negative because of what quadrants it is. So like if you have something like 135 degrees, for example, right? That's actually when you subtract it from 180, you get 45. So the cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. But in the second quadrant, you have to add on the negative. So the cosine of 135 degrees would be negative square root of 2 over 2. So the quadrant determines the SIGN sine of co sine and cosine, right? Uh, explain how the sine of an angle in the second quadrant differs from the reference angle in the unit circle. So the sine of the angle, because it's positive, doesn't differ at all they're the same thing so the sine of the reference angle for an angle in here is the same as whatever this angle would be here so like you could literally draw draw copy this in here right so that you can see where this is if these two are like this what you know is that this these angles are congruent they're the same thing right the measure these angles are equal and so Whatever the sine and cosine of this one is, you get those values over here, but the cosine's negative. Down here, if you drew it in again like this, right? So you get the same. So these are all the same angle. These are all the, re you know, these are all the, whatever the angles are. Same. So they're all the same values, same measure. But now whatever values here, they're both negative. Down here, you have the cosine positive and the sine negative. So once you know the reference angle, then you can determine what the value for all these other um, angles in all these other quadrants are. State the domain of the sine and cosine functions. Well, you, you can plug anything into sine and cosine because if you go back to the unit circle, you can go around and around as many times as you want. That's not a big deal. But what's big deal is that what the output is, well, the radius of the cosine is never going to get bigger than one so the since this is the cos the x is the cosine the largest it ever gets is one the smallest it ever gets is minus one and the sine the largest it ever gets is one and the smallest it ever gets is minus one so the ranges are minus one to one for both of them so the cosine and sine are bounded the range is bounded by these values so that means that we can go spin around as many times as we want, either direction, positive or negative. So the input is any number. Output is just minus 1 and 1. For the following exercise, state whether the reference angle for the given angle 135. Well, like I was saying before, if it's in the second quadrant, all you have to do is subtract it, the angle from 135, and you get the reference angle 45. Now, if I want to find the sine and cosine of that, Right, the cosine is going to be negative, the sine is going to be positive, and we're good to go there. Um, now this one, this is negative, so this one's going this direction. So it literally puts it into the first quadrant. So all I have to do is subtract off negative 2 pi, because I'm going in the negative direction. So I take uh, negative 7 pi over 4, subtract off negative 2 pi, which is the same as adding it, and I get pi over 4, which is my reference angle. So this that would be pi over 4, something like that. For the following exercises, find the reference angle, uh, the quadrant of the terminal sine, the sine and cosine of each angle. If the angles are not one of the special angles of the unit circle, use a calculator and round to three decimals. Okay, so... I'll do the calculator as well. We'll pretend like these are not special angles. These are. So the first one is 210. Well, 210 is between 180 and 270, so that puts it down here in the third quadrant. So we know that both the sine and the cosine are negative. So I can find the reference angle by subtracting it from 10. So I get 30. So th the cosine of 210 is negative because in the third quadrant, cosine of 30, we know that cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2. Same with the sine. It's also negative because in the third quadrant, right, it's down here somewhere like this. And so that's also negative. We know that the sine of uh, 30 is 1 half. 
Um, now this one we have five pi over three. So, I mean, I have you can see this is written right here, but how might I even think about what quadrants it in? Quadrant it is in. So I could think of if I give a common denominator right here, zero. This is pi over two, but if I find give it a denominator of three, eh, I probably wouldn't go into that one, right? So, but I have one pi over three, two pi over three, three pi over three, four pi over three, five pi over three, like that. I could literally just count them: pi over three, like this; two pi over three here. 3 pi over 3, which is just pi, of course. 4 pi over 3. And then 5 pi over 3. And there we go. So now we know that this thing is in the um, fourth quadrant. So that makes the sine negative and the cosine positive. And we also know that the reference angle is pi over 3. Because, I mean... We just counted it off like that. So to get to 6 pi over 3, this is going to be, you know, pi over 3 more to get to 2 pi. So there's our reference angle. So I know that cosine of 5 pi over 3 is the same as, well, cosine's positive of pi over 3, which is 1 half. And then, um... Sine of 5 pi over 3 is negative because it's in this fourth quadrant, which is negative square root of 3. So pi over 3, I know that radians might still be uncommon. Pi over 3 is just 60 degrees if you want to do it. It helps to really have these basic angles down so you recognize the radian version of it really quick. And that way you know that if you're dividing by 3, it's a very good chance it's the reference angle you know, 60 or pi over 3. So right... Pi over 3 is 60, and pi over 6 is is 30, right? Pi over 4 is 45. So a lot of times, a lot of times, it's nice to have those those values just memorized so that you recognize. Like over here, since these are this is 5 pi over 3. Automatically, I'm gonna have a. I have a pretty good idea that the reference angle is gonna be pi over three, because of the denominator. Find the coordinates of the point on a circle with radius uh, 20 and corresponding to 120 degrees. Now, one of the key factors of if this is not a unit circle, right? We would have this is an x value and this is a y value, right? So what we know is that the cosine of theta is opposite, in this case, right, cosine of theta, for example, is equal to x over r. So if I just multiply over to the other side, I get the x value, which is r cosine theta. It's hard to write with. And similarly, Sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, which would be y over r. Multiply the r over and you get that for the y value. So if I want to know any coordinate on the in the xy plane and I just know the angle that I've turned and the, how far I walk out, I can calculate it by doing these for me here. x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. All right, so to answer this question, I just need to do 20 times, uh, 20 times the cosine of 120. Now, 120 is, 120 degrees is in this right here, 120, right? So that makes this, my reference angle, 60, or pi over 3 like we just did, right? So I know the cosine's negative, so I have R times the cosine of 60, which is the reference angle, so that's 20 times negative two. Uh, 1 over negative 2 and I get negative 10. Uh, and then similarly, 20 times uh, sine of 120. 20 is equal times the sine of 60 because that's the reference angle. Sine's positive in the second quadrant, so I leave it positive and I get my x and the y values. But you can also do just plug it in the calculator. I w wouldn't have to do all this stuff. This is more for 
doing it by hand, what I would just do is just plug this stuff into the calculator like that, right? And that would give me what I'm looking for there.